Um, thank you for joining this workshop. So my name is Stuart Xiao. I'm a partner solution consultant with New Relic based out of Singapore. So my workshop today is about observability. And at New Relic, our goal is to make observability a daily practice for all the engineers out there at every stage of the software life cycle. And we do this by you know, making instrumentation as frictionless as possible so that you, know, you guys can easily explore the data uh, that you collect into the, the telemetry data that you collect and be able to troubleshoot your software or your application. Right. My goal in this session is to share with you some observability practices and how you can view better software when you incorporate observability and making sure that the software is delivering the outcome that is expected. Now, so let's start by understanding uh, observability a little bit better. So if you go and Google observability now, you'll see many different definitions. You know, but whichever definition works for you, we all know that monitoring is important. Right. And if observability is going to be the next evolution of uh, monitoring, you know, that is going to help us gain better understanding of the complex system we are delivering. And I think we can all agree that observability should be an important component of the software delivery value chain, right? Especially in our ever increasing complexity, uh, complex environment that we have in the digital enterprise. Right, where we're looking for you know, better ways of monitoring to collect more telemetry data to make uh, data-driven decisions. You know, but for me, the fundamental difference between monitoring and observability is that we should be looking to incorporate observability into the systems we are building at every stage of the application lifecycle. Um, and understanding you know, what data is needed and important for the changes and the decisions that we're going to make, right? Whether it's, you know, you're going to be fixing a defect or you're going to be adopting new technology architectures, right? What impact is, is it going to have, you know, to all the different aspects of software management, right? Whether it's reducing costs, minimizing risk, improving productivity, or even efficiency, right? So, you know, when we have observability, and we're able to understand our system better, right? We should be able to, you know, accelerate the time to market for the software systems that we're delivering. We want to be able to ensure better uptime and performance of our software. We want to be able to troubleshoot and resolve issues better. And, and also very importantly, we also want to be able to optimize the infrastructure, you know, the investment of the infrastructure and the people, the talent that we have in the organization. Now, the basic principle around practicing observability, you know, is to know where you are today or at this moment and where you want to get to, right? Talking about current state and future state. Now, I think we can assume everybody, most people, right? Maybe not everybody will know that they need to understand the before and the after. Like when something is not working, I need to make some changes. And then after I've made the changes, now it's working, right? But it, it's definitely not as simple as that, right? We need to be a bit, have a bit more data to actually make decisions about, you know, why is it not working? Is it working well? You know, after we make the changes and what, it, what the data is actually telling us about the different states, right? What else do we need to know, right? So fundamentally, when we are building a something new, right? Or making changes to software, whether it's an API or a whole business service or just an infrastructure service. Any change that we make to a business critical system, right, or component should always be informed with real observable data and balance that with end user experience. You know, so how are we going to measure the return investment of what we are um, going to change or what we're going to incorporate, what new things we're going to, to deploy, right? To know whether it's worth doing or to continue to work on it, right? The bottom line here is that we, we don't want to make changes without knowing what impact uh, there will be, 
right? So any change should involve planning, observing, changing, testing, and then validating the results, right? So we should, you know, start with understanding what is normal. So before kind of discovering and baselining what is normal, you know, what where we can improve, right? What impact it will have, you know, what is our goal, right? You know, where do we want to get to? What are the dependencies, you know, and address any, any you know, lingering application issues. And while we are performing the, the, the change, it's important to, to ensure everything went smoothly, right? And issues are bubbled up as soon as possible. And then we are done, right? You know, the after, right? We need to do the valid at the validation stage. You know, did we achieve what we set out to do? Right? How, how was the business impacted? You know, do we see better end user performance? happy customers, and are, are we seeing fewer tickets related to the prior state, for instance? Right, so no matter the change, all these are important, yeah? So if we look at an example of how by, you know, by making our cloud platform observable, observable, right, we can master and, and optimize our cloud native environment and, and move faster on the cloud. So this is essentially incorporating an observability practice, you know, into our innovation and growth initiatives on the cloud, right? Essentially, you know, as you start um, adopting a, a new technology, you want to be sure you know what success looks like, right? Whether it's, it is to improve performance, to, uh, you know, to improve resource utilization or, or cloud spend, right? You start with a pilot and by incorporating observability, you get an idea whether it's worth moving ahead with this change or this innovation into production. You know, then when you experiment, you experiment confidently in your production environment, incorporating all this new technology together with observability in your program in increments or your agile release train, right? And, and that's where you start to track your deployment frequency, whether the new technology or the architecture changes that you're making, you know, is it making it harder to deploy changes? You know, are you getting the right visibility into the working of the software and how fast you can troubleshoot as well as clarity on the ownership of, of any issues that arises, right? You know, essentially, you know, all this contributes to things like uh, mean time to repair, you know, or to resolve any issues, right? And, and, and which is what kind of management is looking at in the production for things like, you know, the, SRE effectiveness, for example, right? And then as you look to scale your architecture, you know, your observability solution needs to be able to, to scale accordingly as well, right? Supporting all the monitoring and the visibility requirement. So you can continue to grow your platform efficiently while maintaining reliability, right? And for each of all these capability that we shown here, right? The KPI listed here, they make a very good start to measure success. Right, you know, when you're adopting measuring the availability, the response time of the systems that you are making changes to, right? Those are important at the adopt stage. And then when you start experimenting um, in the production, you know, how frequent you deploy, how long does it take to make a change? And then finally, you know, the your cloud span and when you start to uh, orchestrate your, your containers, you know, you know, how many errors are you making? and stuff like that, right? So, so, you know, so all this measurement should be what a good observability platform um, can re readily provide. So before I jump into my uh, kind of demo about, you know, how we can, how we can instrument our uh, cloud native app uh, uh, better and, and provide the visibility, let, let's look at some examples of uh, dashboards that uh, customers have used to better observe how well they're doing for each of the um, capability moving to the cloud, as I, as I mentioned uh, in my previous slides. Right, so here you can see, uh, you know, when we're adopting, you know, we want to establish baselines. So looking at, uh, you know, kind of on the right, you can see we're comparing the average response or transaction time for a monolith you know, comparing that to a micro microservice uh, transaction time, right? And then looking at the latency, um, you know, for status 200 that are, that are being returned, 
you know, looking at throughputs of all the, the different apps. You know, and, and as we adopt different um, different cloud services, right, and, and migrate to, to microservices, these are some of the, the KPIs as, that we are, uh, we should start, we should, should be looking at, you know, not just in terms of availability and, and, and performance, but, you know, looking at the average fun, uh, duration of a function, in, in this case, a serverless function, right? Okay. Um, and that at, at saturation, the, the response time of the different services, you know, the error rates, you know, and so on, right? So then as, as we move to, um, you know, trying to ex experiment confidently on, on, on the cloud, you know, looking at the, um, our deployment and how well we are, are deploying uh, new releases on, on into production, right? So looking at uh, mean time to recovery, you know, how long is it taking to resolve issues? Looking at the uh, throughput, the number of requests per minute, average response time, you know. Okay, I don't have a chart for deployment history here, but I can show you something um, in a different screen, right? So looking at the different um, transaction over the past hours, you know, the error rate, Right. And talking about deployment, right? You know, we want to be we want to know when we have made deployment into the production system, for instance. Right. So here's an example of a of a service that we're monitoring the uh, the web transaction time, right? And we can see that there's actually a spike in the response time at, at, at this point in time, right? Okay, and this is the external uh, web request coming in. And we can look at the throughput. There's not much changes in the throughput. You know, the error rate is actually gone down, right? But the app deck score, right, is actually, uh, you know, gone down significantly. So we kind of drill down into the, uh, into this, uh, where, where we're seeing this issue. We can see, you know, the blue area showing the PHP code is, you know, taking a uh, much longer time to run, right? The database, MySQL is also taking longer time. But what you can see, the lines, what you can tell from the lines in the background are the deployment, right? And also when the light yellow and the dark yellow areas are where we have violation. And if you look closely at the, um, the right-hand side here, this, this line here is actually representing a deployment, right? So the, our deployment to, to actually um, optimize a database query, right? That didn't work very well, okay. Um, and then the response time sh shot up, okay. We got a, a violation, right? And then it went further. The violation went further. We got a critical violation, and then the um, you know the the operator decided to uh, fix put in a hot fix to fix the bad bad query, uh, realizing that it's not working. You know he decided to actually roll back the changes. Right, so so this is an example of you know how by actually uh, incorporating deployment marker into in, into our um, into our deployment, making changes to the application, we can we can figure out like you know what is the the, the cause of the uh, the likely cause of the, uh, the the issue very quickly. Um, if if I move back to the uh, to the, uh, you know, kind of experimenting confidently and looking at how we scale better, right? You know, the different uh, telemetry that we are looking at here will be things like, as we start to use things like uh, Kubernetes to help us orchestrate, you know, and dynamically allocate uh, um, containers or other resources, right? You know, we can look at the, uh, the number of transactions on a particular node, right? You know, what we call transaction pressure. Um, looking at the number of transactions hitting a particular port, you know, the average response time, you know, when we have this uh, new architecture, you know, how long is the, uh, the response time from different location. And I think very importantly here is that, you know, as we make all these changes into our environment, is it helping us to, to, to release failures in our business transaction? Right. So, have, so, so, you know, if the changes we are making is to help us um, understand, uh, help us try to eliminate or reduce the number of failures in our payment 
then that, me that measurement is something that will be very important for us to track to understand whether you know the the, the changes that we're making to the to the architecture is actually worth uh, continuing with right and of course very importantly our cloud span right you know how much how much is it costing us in relation to the uh, to the improvement that we are getting so so is it a, a worthwhile in, in investment or is it something is there something else that we need to look at to to actually balance the cost uh, with the uh, improvement that we are we are seeing Okay, so I'm going to show a, a different dashboard. The, the previous one was more looking at how we can move faster on, on, on the cloud, how observability help us move faster, right? Um, this is more um, some dashboards around developer views, right? Looking at the, uh, the page performance. Okay, so these are the different uh, page URL. We're looking at, you know, understanding like number of page views, you know, the response time understanding you know the the breakdown of the response time between the front end and the back end connection time as well as um you know the breakdown of the uh, um like things like ajax call right the different uh, browser timing for for the ajax request yeah so you know different uh, uh, uh attributes of all or metrics that we should be looking at in terms of AJAX, you know, number of requests for each of the uh, the different API calls, the uh, you know the the request errors and, and JavaScript errors, right? So going further down, you know, looking at the top transaction URL, the uh, you know the page where users are actually abandoning, right? You know, especially in like uh, uh, e-commerce website where they are abandoning the uh, the uh, when they get to the, the, the checkout page and we need to figure out, you know, why these are happening, you know, and, and, and in, look at how we can improve the, um, you know, the, the, the navigation or the overall end user experience, right? Um, looking at the uh, DevOps productivity, um, you know, this is where we look at how many uh, successful release we put into production, right? Um, and then looking at the, the rollbacks where we are not successful, you know, um, looking at the time from the first commit to releases, right? And also understanding like, you know, the, uh, the last day, uh, the number of days since the, the last uh, deployment, some view metrics, you know, average commits per week, kind of looking at the, um, the efficiency of the uh, um, operation efficiency essentially, right? Okay. Uh, if we go further down, then we'll be looking at things like, you know, successful and, and fail beat uh, views, right? Looking at the throughput, comparing week to week, you know, our app deck score, you know, how many, how many of those are in a satisfactory zone or, you know, in the tolerable zone or actually failing, right? Okay. Um, you know, looking at the tickets created per week, um, MTTR, you know, average tickets uh, that are reopened, right? So so you're probably thinking, why am I showing you all these things? You know, these are things that I've actually are able to get from the monitoring tool or the ITSM tools that I have today, right? You know, what, what we are trying to uh, incorporate in, in having this observability practice is to develop this culture of, you know, making data-driven decisions about you know the changes and the innovations that we're going to be make into our our application into our software right we want to be able to understand the impact across all the different areas right so whether it's operational efficiency or developer efficiency or even cloud costs right so budget tracking usage and taking this data from integrating with the aws uh, uh, billing services okay so uh, um, so I hope I've given you some understanding of you know kind of the 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 metrics or you know the uh, um, you know the telemetry that you want to be looking at to you know to uh, or you want to consider to actually you know uh, make decisions about the uh, whatever you're doing to your your software okay so what I like to do now is to actually kind of um, 
dive deeper into and look at an example of how we we instrument uh, different components of a of a simple calculator service, right? So here we have a, a PHP app, you know, making requests through the API gateway, um, you know, to a Lambda function, right? The Lambda function is uh, writing logs to the uh, to CloudWatch, and then we are we've added a, a Lambda function to then take the 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 logs from CloudWatch and then sending it to to New Relic, so. So the, the PHP application is also instrumented with a, a, a APM agent, a language agent, right? It's got distributed trace enabled, right? And the Lambda function is, is also uh, instrumented with a, a, a Python uh, Lambda agent, right? So let, let's, let's look at um, the UI that we can see. So before we, we do that, what I want to do is to, you know, send some some uh, you know traffic into the into this uh, service that we have, right? So this is the PHP uh, a UI. The idea is that you know we enter a couple of numbers, right? Um, and then the 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 API gateway URL, and that's going to invoke the lambda function, right? And that's going to give us a return. And in this case, I put in two valid numbers, and it's going to calculate the sum, the product difference, and and uh, the division, right? So very simple function, right? I'm gonna put in another one, this a different number so that we can see the output clearly, right? Okay. And then maybe I will put in uh, an error, right? So in this case, I put in a, 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 a string, right? And you can see that it's actually throwing, throwing an error and saying 11X is not a, it's not a number, right? Um, we, can, we can fix that again, put in some numbers, right? Okay, so I've executed like four or five transactions, and we're going to go back to, to the uh, observability platform and look at the results. But before I do that, I just want to quickly show you, you know, what we are doing with the Lambda functions um, and, and how it works, right? Um, yeah, so here you can see the, the calculator function, right? Um, so you can see that we've actually... Uh, instrumented this function with a, a lambda layer and this kind of helps to make the instrumentation a lot faster and simpler in that we don't have to put all the the language code into the instrumentation code into the uh, the, the function itself and you can see here the function is actually triggered by uh, a, the api gateway right so um if you look at the uh, the the layers here you can see that it's actually a, a new relic Python uh, release 3.8 uh, uh, um, piece of code, right? And when we have done this, you know, very simply, the, the code for the calculator is just this bit. And what I've done is to add a, a call to accept the distributed trace so that we can link this call to the, uh, you know, to the request from the PHP app, right? And what I've also done is to add in a custom uh, event so that when it gets, you know, when, when the numbers are valid and I've calculated the, you know, the, the, the results that I want before I return, I'm going to send an event called NRCA calculator and, and, and provide, you know, the two numbers that I've actually sent back, right? Or, or that they've actually inputted, yeah? Um, and if you look at the, the other function that, that is there, so that is the log ingestion function. So when the calculator function writes to the, uh, the CloudWatch logs, that triggers the, the log ingestion, right? And, and that will send, the, that this is what sends the data to um, the New Relic, okay? So if we now go to, to the New Relic observability platform, right? So, um, before we look at the Lambda function, I want to show you the data that we just uh, requested or we just submitted, right? And that gets sent to, to New Relic. You can see that we have um, what we call custom events in here, right? And this custom event, the NRCA is, is actually, uh, we've created a custom event and we can see what, what's inside the custom event, right? So very quickly, if I, 
if I go into my query builder and and go to that custom event, right? Maybe select everything, right? Just to show you um, what is there. You can see that these are the uh, the transactions that I've uh, requested. Yeah, the three transactions that that uh, uh, happen. Okay, um, and, and this is this is how you know New Relic when when you send in the ingest all the telemetry, the different telemetry data, right? It, all the data goes into the um, the our database, and then you can use you know what we call NERQL, which is very simple, like right, and then build the different dashboard dashboards that I was showing you earlier on, right? So the ones like this, right? They all build with NERQL and 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 um, you know and putting this as, as as charts, you know, using different uh, way of presenting it and adding them to to dashboard, right? So. So if we look at the, the Lambda function itself, right, the calculator, right? So what we can see here as we go in, right, we can see, you know, the, the different invocation that happens. So if we look at the data for the last 30 minutes, right, I have four invocation, right? So these were the ones, 2.40 p.m. that they just got in, invoked, right? And these are the duration. Um, so there was no errors. And you can see that, you know, I haven't called the function for a while. So, you know, the first one was actually a, a cold start, right? Uh, if we look at the errors, I think I triggered some errors, right? Yeah, so there, there was one error, you know, and that's the error rate, right? And you can see that the error is actually because I put in 11x in there, right? We can drill in and then look at the uh, a little bit more detail about that, uh, that error, looking at the error trace, yeah? For, this is from the... Uh, the, the lambda function uh, uh, itself, right? Um, and then looking at the distributed trace, um, so what you can see, right, in this trace, when I call the uh, starting from the uh, PHP app, you know, we can see the, let's look at the one with the error, right? Okay, you can see the uh, PHP calculator app that is then making a request to the uh, Lambda function, right? Okay, and down here, this is the call, the uh, PHP going to the, uh, you know, to the uh, API gateway and getting to the uh, Lambda function. So if you look at the, uh, the uh, details of the Lambda function, this is what we are capturing, right? Okay, and, and something that, you know, we do very well is in terms of how we provide the logs related to this particular transaction, right? So if you look at the logs here, all I'm seeing is actually the, um, the, the logs from the Lambda function itself. So I think this is a, a better view. Let's look at the, the, uh, the logs uh, view, right? So you see these are the four uh, records in, in the logs, right? And if you look up here, you know, this is, here we are showing the, uh, the you know, the Lambda request ID, right? We're filtering the, the logs to just the Lambda request ID or the trace ID. So if I had logs from the, uh, you know, from the PHP, they will be shown here as well, right? But you notice that I'm not showing the, the logs for the different, um, you know, for the different uh, invocation of the Lambda function, right? So if I go back to, to the uh, distributed trace, and maybe look at the, you know, the very first one, right? Okay, so very, we see very similar things, but here we see more locks, right? And these locks are actually, um, you know, the locks, the, the additional records are actually what, what is uh, locked by the, you know, when we started the, the agent during the cold start. Right, so you remember there was a cold start in the uh, in the uh, um, lambda function screen. So this is what this is showing, right? The additional logs that are there. Okay. Um, yeah. So we can look at the the invocation. You know. Uh, so this were the the duration and the number of invocation, the tree invocation and, and 
that are successful and one error, you know, and looking at all the different invocation, right? Okay. Um, so yeah, so so that was the uh, kind of looking at the uh, you know a, a lambda function that has been instrumented um, and looking at the you know looking at the distributed trace as well as the logs in context to help us understand um, you know what what goes on when we make that, that request from the uh, the PHP app right down to the, uh, the lambda function right so what I'm going to do now is to show you a a more complex uh, uh, service that that makes lambda call right so this is part of a a telco uh you know web e-commerce website where people go in and and you know purchase phones and and or select plans you know and 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 kind of do the uh the um you know the, the checkout and, and payment transaction right so this is calling a a a, a purchase log lender function so if we drill down into that you can see here we, if I take a step back, you can see that this particular function here, we're showing that it's actually been instrumented, right? So instrumentation, yes. And the um, the event source is actually the, the API gateway, right? So if you look into that similar screen, of course, a lot more, more invocation, right? Okay. But if I click on go into distributed uh, tracing, right, you will see that you know, it's got a lot more spans and a lot more entities. And if I drill down into that, you know, there's a lot more traces here, right? And we can we can kind of try and identify which one is showing us problem by looking at maybe just the back end duration or the uh, the first uh, the root span, right? The first uh, trace or looking at the whole duration, okay? And how this helps us to to work better is to you know, the bottom is the timeline, the top, the y-axis is the duration, right? So the ones on the top are actually kind of the outliers, okay? So we can actually either select one from here or we can select one from here. So this example here, they actually, you know, it's four days ago, but doesn't matter. It's showing us that it has three errors. Let, let, let's click into that. So you kind of see a, 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 a service map, right? Or uh, the distributed trace, right? Starting from the web portal, you know, so looking at the uh, fulfillment service and then billing, um, you know, and then shipping service. And then, you know, this is also calling a, a, a Lambda function, right? Okay. And what you see down here, right now, there are a lot more spans and they're actually a lot more, um, um, yeah, a lot more spans. And we're looking at, we can also see in process spans as well, right? So as opposed to what I showed you earlier on, where we were looking at just the you know the calls to each of the different services now we can look at the functions that are within this uh, web portal service right so the different calls and and, the, and their duration yeah and what you will notice here is that this is yeah same thing we have a, a error here right okay we can look at the logs um you know we can look at why why it's failing here there's actually a a, a kind of a, a promotion coupon that you're trying to use, but it was invalid, right? And and the thing that I wanted to show you here is this is kind of a, a polyglot uh, microservice architecture, right? We have a Node.js for the Lambda function. You know, if you look at shipping, uh, you can see the response time and the throughput, but it's, it's, it's written in, in C. So we have a, you know, uh, instrumentation for C program. Um, through an SDK and then the billing service, same thing, you know, you can then look at, it's actually a, a Python APM, right? And, and so on, yeah, okay? So if you look at the logs again, right? Now you can see that the logs are actually still related to this whole transaction, right? But you're actually getting logs from, from all the different services, yeah? So that's where this trace ID here, right? That becomes important. So if you look at the service name, right? Okay, the service name column here, you got fulfillment service, billing service, and you know, fulfillment service again, yeah. So that is the Lambda function, right? Um, I think if I can add 
maybe not here, but doesn't matter. So, yeah, so that's that's a lambda function, and then back to the other services. Okay. Okay, I want to, you know, with the time I have now, I want to kind of switch to, you know, how we can observe um, Kubernetes cluster, right? You may have heard um, the buzz around our Big C launch and possibly about uh, eBPF, right? So what we have done, um, New Relic acquired Big C um, or from Big C Lab last year, right? And we recently announced that we've open source Pixie, right? And integrated, and we've also integrated this open source Pixie into New Relic's uh, Kubernetes uh, monitoring, right? So, so before Pixie, right? You know, to see what services is running in the port, you you need to instrument the the services with some form of a language agent, right? And what Pixie brings into the into the picture, right? Pixie is a, a Kubernetes native in cluster um, observability agent, right? You install Pixie um, into the Kubernetes cluster, right? The data that telemetry that we collected stores in the uh, uh, in the in the cluster itself, right? And you get instant visibility into the Kubernetes workload, right? Which I'm going to show you in a minute. And all this requires no manual instrumentation, right? So it, it is integrated, if you have used New Relic Kubernetes cluster before, right? It is integrated into this original uh, cluster explorer, you know, and, and the interface between PC and, 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 and the cluster explorer is, they're all fully integrated, right? So um, let me start by kind of looking at, you know, help you understand what it was showing here on the, um, on the cluster itself, right? So here, if you kind of pay attention to the quick guide here, you know, the outer ring here is representing the nodes, right? So if we, mark, if we hover over this uh, icon here, you can see the um, um, the resource utilization, right? You know, CPU, memory, storage, as well as, um, you know, the uh, allocatable uh, ports um, that, that, are, that are available, right, or, or used, okay? So the inner rings here are showing like the, the ports that are running or alerting or, or pending, right? So, so alert, running, of course, means they're running okay. Uh, alerting represents some kind of violation, right? And pending typically happens when, you know, maybe the, uh, the container image is not available or not found, right? So, you know, so if we, if we click on one of these, you can, you can understand this particular port, right, you know, that is actually have a critical and a warning. And these are kind of related probably to the, uh, you know, the uh, the amount of memory, you know, the is getting close to the to the limit, right? Okay, so the request is, is the yellow bit, right? The limit is, uh, is, uh, is, is the red line and the, uh, the blue line is actually where we are right now, right? Okay, so there's a warning here and there's some other warning, uh, you know, critical, a violation that we have okay but if you are you know software developer you know and, and you want to understand like uh you know your the, the services that is running within a port right you can very quickly kind of filter and look at say um the deployment look at a particular uh service say let's look at the catalog service right and we can show exactly where the uh, let me get rid of this right we can show that this this service that right, is actually running on on this particular node right um, it's part of this uh, replica set okay um, same information about the container and where you see now right because this is a, a container running uh, some some code right we pixie automatically instrument or not instrument but captures a uh, open telemetry, right? Web transaction response time, throughput. So these are things that you see typically with, you know, APM or language agent, right? But then, you know, this is done without any, any language agent instrumentation, right? And what we have done is to then, you know, integrate this so that you can then look at this open telemetry data in the same way that how I show the, uh, the Lambda function. Right, looking at the the response time, 
you know, looking at things like uh, the, the transaction, so the, the request to the, the catalog, you know, and even things like database, if the database you're using is, uh, is, is, you know, the protocol is actually supported by, by Pixie, yeah. So if I go back to the, uh, to the Kubernetes cluster, right, I want to now show you what goes on inside Pixie, okay? So, so we can go to this live debugging with Pixie, and you can see that you know Pixie is is, is providing us with um, uh, live data about what's going on within the cluster, right? So, so Pixie in a nutshell, right, is, is really a, a developer tool, right? So you may see, you may think this UI is not as friendly as the one you saw with the new Relic UI, but it's really a developer tool. And all these views that I'm going to show you or you're seeing now, right? They are built with, with scripts, okay? Pixel scripts, okay? So with the scripts, you can you can show basically all the data that is collected uh, by oh. by Pixie. Hello, morning. Hello. Good morning. Okay, so here is a Pixie cluster. Oh, you fine, can, thanks. <laughs> You can see. Um, let, let me turn off this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you can see the you know the uh, the front end making calls to the different services, and the line kind of representing the uh, you know the amount of traffic that goes sure. through. Okay, you hear me well. Is it better? Yeah, I got. I got you. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. And, so if I, I kind of scroll down, you can look at the, the name spaces, mm -hmm. the and nodes that are running, you know, some of the things that are kind of, you know, common between the, the, Pix, you know, the Kubernetes cluster as well as the, uh, as well as within Pixie itself, right? You can look at the, the services that are running, you know, the ports that are running. Um, you know, if I want to look at that same catalog service that I showed you earlier on, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can click down into here and see there is, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, so PX uh, Sock Shop, right? There's that, that same catalog service that I showed you earlier on. So now we can look at the, the you know, the HTTP request, right? So looking at the HTTP request, the errors, the latency, right? So this this information is, is what gets sent to, to, to New Relic and what you saw earlier on in the New Relic UI. Okay, so so things like CPU usage and all, okay? Network uh, traffic, you know, uh, resident set size, virtual memory size, right? Inbound traffic to this particular port, okay? Port metadata, and then one very interesting thing that you know that, that you may want to explore is this flip, uh, fl okay. flame graph, right? So, can see the so let me just make it a bit smaller so that you can see. Okay. Okay. So so what this is showing. You know, uh, you, you typically would use this to identify things like like hotspot, right? So essentially, what is showing the the different um, color coding here, right? It's showing what the, you know, where the the different functions, right? They are spending time on the CPU, you know, and, and the size of the bar is the amount of time that the you know the the different functions or the the namespace Hi, or the kernel you Hi, know you? is using CPU time. Hi, how are you? Okay. So um yeah, so we can we can kind of uh drill down to area that we are you know in, interested in and kind of drill down into exactly what calls are are actually taking the most time within that particular um service. Okay, so yeah, so basically, you know, um, all this information is captured live and stored in, in, uh, in, in the cluster itself, right? And other, other things that we can see because we're looking at the packet uh, going through the, the kernel, right? So things like DNS data, right? Looking at the, uh, the request to the, to the DNS. Um, looking at the uh, DNS flow graph, so you can see exactly which service is making um, Kubernetes requests. Um, okay, so I think um, I'm going to 
So pause okay, here and kind of summarize what I've, uh, you know, I've presented. So if I go back uh, to my uh, slide. Okay. okay, so what I've shown you, right, you know, is, um, is, is all dashboards and, uh, you know, uh, workflows from the uh, New Relic One observability platform, right? So the, the platform, as you can see, is actually built on the idea of being able to instrument everything, right? Whether it's, uh, you know, data from our agents or telemetry data that gets emitted by cloud native services or whether it's from monitoring tools that you see up here, okay? So, um, so the, the idea is to bring this all it's together really into up. one one UI. So because you know we don't want software teams to actually be flipping between different tools. You know, where, especially when they have a uh, urgent critical problems to solve. You know, and, and and this can help them make better data driven decisions uh, uh, much faster and, and better, right? And. I want to close with yes, this uh, I, I'm using my slide that talks about you know how New Relic is providing our telemetry data platform to to all users, right, to the public, you know, with a perpetually free tier uh, usage, right. So as you can see here, perpetually free, no credit cards required when you you sign on, right. So you get a hundred gigabyte of uh, data per month. Right, so the ingestion from all the different services, you know, whether it's Lambda, whether it's a APM, oh, whether it's a host, Lambda? right? Yeah, okay, you can, you can use them, the um, you know, for uh, free forever. I'm right? okay, so, yeah, but I haven't, I'm not seeing a uh, KBO or anyone. So I encourage you to, uh, you okay. know, to, to go to our website, sign up and, and, and um, you know, leverage uh, this, this, this free service and, and you know, build better software. So I'm going to stop, uh, pause here. Uh, I, I think I have five minutes yes, yes, yes. for questions. Yeah, thank you. Bye. And for Jeffrey, is it better now? So I don't see any questions here. Um, so I think, thank you very much everyone for uh, joining this workshop and listening to my presentation. I hope it was uh, something useful for you. I, 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 my mobile. Um, thank you.